40 years since I was... You still don't know what works from creamery butter. Oh, I've had my eye on you, smirking at the girls, laughing behind my back. Out! Well, what, what, am, what am I going to do now? That's your problem. My problem is production. And there's just too much dead wood around here. New blood can double the output in this section. Well, you mustn't blame them. It's not their fault. I think... I think you didn't understand me. I said, out, out, out! Oh, yes, I understood you. Ah, indeed I did, Mr. Dustin. Very well. Well...
explosive fraud. Ready for brave men and strong women, huh? <laughs> Good. 
we're going to put you up on a pony like that someday. You can gallop around like the wild wind. Barney's raising a horse, Grandpa. I, I don't know. I don't say I don't know. Just breathe that air. See? Mm, pure, clean America, that's what it is. Independence, self-confidence. That's quite a change from that dark, smoldering, citified trash bin that we came from, isn't it? Out here, there's nobody to help you. Well, help! Out here, any man will gladly give you help. But you've got to learn to help yourself first, you know? Did I... <coughs> did I ever tell you the story of Beaver Smith? Well, Beaver Smith, he didn't have nothing left for his nerves. And here he was tied to an anthill by them savages. And there was uh, rawhide thongs were squeezing at his skull bones, here, and the fire was burning at his feet. And, and them redskins was dancing around, they was jabbering, and they, they was poking him with red hot spears. You see, well, did you think that that worried Beaver? No, sir, not a bit. <laughs> you know, he just raised up and he says, "I'm gonna get out of this," he says, "and I'm gonna lift up my land, and I'm gonna." raise up my family. And then, you know, while this, these thongs were squeezing his brains out. Grover. Yeah, and the fire was searing at his bare feet. Well, then he just made the only play that was possible. And he, he burst out laughing right in that chief's face. Well, you know that chief? He, he was so insulted that he ordered Beaver Smith to be unbound, see, and then he challenged him to mortal hand-to-hand -hand combat. Well, you know, Beaver, he was pretty tired, but then, man, he just, he picked up that ugly old chief and he thrang him around and around, and he threw him right in that hole, tried. And then he picked up a barrel of gunpowder and he threw it into the fire there, and he blew up the whole kitten caboodle, and then he ate that chief's liver raw. Grover! Jeff, don't you believe a word of it. Grandpa, don't you sort of miss the gas lights burning at night? Or, or, or the peddlers working in the street? Or maybe the trolley car's ringing? No, sir. Uh, boy, I say that when you can see the smoke from your neighbor's chimney, why, well, it's time to move on. Come on. It's about time that came out of there, isn't it? Oh, uh... About 20 seconds, I guess. But never you mind that Abilene cobbler's for Miss Phoebe. You mean you're baking that big crusty pie for her? That's exactly what I mean, yes, sir. Well, have you forgotten how much I like Abilene cobbler? That pie is for Miss Phoebe. Charlie's getting about as mean as a stripe and tail pole cap. And twice as selfish. Well, that's what happens when old age hits a man with a weak mind. You can never tell, Duke. You two would be better off to look around at them coals instead of making fun of your elders. Well, what do you know? I take it back. He isn't selfish. And he isn't as mean as a striped tail pole cat? You better take that back, too. Well, you got another pie in there? You two would complain if you're going to be hung with a new rope. I see any trouble up ahead for us, Phil? Oh, I figure we got about three more days of real dry going, Chris, and hit the top of the ridge and drop down into Green Valley. A lot of good peat in there. Green Valley? That's where Grover Allen's going to homestead, he said. Well, Grover Allen? Yeah. Is that what he's going to do, homestead? Yeah. It's pretty hard work for a man who's been sitting around a factory all his life. What do you mean, sitting around a factory all his life? That man's a genius, an inventor. Told me so himself. He just had a little bad luck, that's all. Looks like we got some company, Mr. Chris. Bill Stebbins, the name. I'm in trade goods. Chris Hale. It's Charlie Worcester, Bill Stebbins. Hawks, Bill right. Shannon, Barnaby West. Howdy. I, uh, I got a wagon load of trade goods just arrived from the east. I'd like to join up with you for a while and do some trading. Now, that is, if you don't mind. Well, you'll be welcome to join up, Mr. Stebbins. You can pull in down at the end of the line there. Oh, well, much obliged. Oh, I, um, I made a special point of bringing some newspapers from back east. Not more than a couple of months old. Can I offer you one? Much obliged. I'll have one, if you don't mind. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? Take it back to Grover Allen, that's what. Grover Allen? 
Yeah. We have a number of families from the East. <sighs> Fresh antelope stew, thanks to Mr. Wooster. Mm -hmm. Jeff, you didn't eat your dinner. I guess I'm just not very hungry, Mom. Jeff, you haven't eaten enough lately to keep a grasshopper chirping. You haven't been sleeping much, either. Just, just a little overdone today, that's all. And yesterday, and the day before. Well, then I think you better get right to bed. Come on. Oh, I'm not tired, Mom. Honest. Come on, off you go, right now. Nah, you best uh, go to bed, like your mother says, because tomorrow we are going to look around for a pony, like Barney's. Grover, he's too young for a pony. That's nonsense. Beaver Smith was riding bareback when he was four. Sometimes it's hard to know what's best for that boy. You know, Jeff's <clears throat> like his dad in many ways. Lots of troubles, all hidden down in here. Johnny always had a ready smile, though. Well, Jeff, can't be exactly like Johnny. I guess I loved my son as much as anybody, and I was proud to be the father of such a brave soldier. And I'm proud to have you as a daughter-in-law. But he is gone, and we have to think about the future. Now, Jeff, he's going to grow up in his own new world, not the old, tired world that I knew. And we have to help him stand on his own two feet and not be afraid of the future. Are you talking about Jeff or me? Both of you, maybe. You worry too much about how it might have been if Johnny was here. But Johnny went off to war, and Johnny is never going to come marching home again. So I'm going calling on Miss Phoebe. What are you going to do? You know, Johnny wouldn't want you sitting around here moping over these dusty memories. He'd want you to have a full life kind of life that he never had himself. So you just let yourself go. Start living your own life. Start flirting with the boys a little just for fun. Oh, hmm? Rover. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe I did love Johnny too much. But I know Jeff needs me. Well, everybody has a need. Even Miss Phoebe. Now, is that what you call living? Breaking another spinster's poor heart? Break nothing. I'm just going to discover a few smiles where never a smile was before, and I won't be late. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Stebby. Well, it's my pleasure, Miss Phoebe. Goodwill is sometimes good business. I'd rather miss the news from home, but I must say, some of the things they print nowadays... Look at this, for instance. It's shocking. What sort of a person would do a thing like this? Yes, I know well what you mean. Sometimes I think I'd just as soon get along without the latest news. I prefer to hear the bluebirds sing. Well, may I wish you the best of luck then, Miss Edie? Oh, I'd like to keep this for Mr. Allen, if you don't mind. Allen? Grover Allen? You know him? No, no, I've, I've never had the pleasure. Oh, he's such a kind person, a true gentleman. Yes. Well, in that case, I'll leave it for him. Uh, it might hit him just right. Good night, Miss Phoebe. Good night. Oh, good evening, Miss Stebbins. Good evening. <laughs> good evening, Miss Phoebe. I brought you a little something from the bakery. Oh, good evening, Mr. <laughs> Rooster. Oh, what a delectable pie. Oh, it's just plain old Abilene cobbler. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Booster, I'm sure that no pastry in Boston was ever so elegant. Well, maybe it was a labor of love. <laughs> oh, now, Mr. Booster. Yeah, it was. <laughs> oh, just let me get some plates. So, this is where the live ones are, huh? Oh, how nice. Good evening, Mr. Allen. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good people. Mmm. <laughs> That heavenly aroma could only come from the culinary genius of Charlie. Well, we may as well eat it while it's hot. Perhaps we should have a glass of sherry for the occasion. One might as well wish for the moon, my dear. I got some cooking muscadoodle that's drinkable. <laughs> At times. <laughs> well. Nothing less than a martiado for the occasion. But I must watch it carefully. I've heard from my nephew 
about Indians getting into fire water. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 To you, my fair lady, and to a better day tomorrow. Hmm? <laughs> I could hope it'd be a bit cooler tomorrow. All I can see ahead is some warmer weather. Oh, dear, really? I thought I would expire this afternoon. You know, this is fine work and an excellent lock. Do you know about locks, too? Oh, yes, when I was an inventor, I used to tinker around with keys and locks. You know, I was once asked by a very great industrialist, my friend George Duskin, to invent a triple lock for his valuables. George Duskin? Yes, he pioneered all my early inventions. That poor fellow, he passed on quite unexpectedly. He traded his life away in the line of duty, you might say. Speaking of trading, a trader from your part of the country just joined up. <clears throat> from my part of the country? Yeah. Yes, and he, he left this paper for you. Oh, he did. Yeah. Great. Wolves of passion. Did you say something, Mr. Allen? I didn't mean to wake you. If you're looking for my grandpa, he, he isn't back yet. Well, no, boy, I, um, I wasn't looking for him. I'm sorry I scared you. You, you didn't scare me. Did you say that this new fella was asking about me? No, he's just a trader, but a wall of fire, though. He's got a new rig and everything. I doubt if an inventor like you would know him. Well, one can't be sure. How nice to know a famous inventor. I've never met an inventor before. Be nice if you got busy and invented us kind of a cooling machine. You got it, Charlie. Why didn't I ever think about that for Miss Phoebe? You and me. All we need is some spare parts and a lot of gumption. Gosh, you ever thought I'd be an inventor? Now, <laughs> oh, could you get some uh, belts and some pulleys? Well, oh, that's easy. All right, we'll all be partners, the three of us. Share and share alike. I bet I could sell a dozen every trip. Why, the sky's the limit, and we will use Miss Phoebe's wagon for modeling. Oh, you don't have to go to a lot of bother for me. It'll be a pleasure, and we might even make some money. What'll we call it? How about Alan and Wooster's Breezy Booster? Good. <laughs> <laughs> or Miss Phoebe's Fanner. <laughs> That's very good. Miss You hear that old Snow Owl? You know what he's saying? Well, he's saying, pity me. I'm old and I'm hollow-eyed and I've got no wife nor family and my nest is falling apart and, well, I'm so doggone hungry I could eat a skinny mouse, toenails, tail and all. You must know him pretty well. <laughs> well, it takes a little while to learn the lingo, but you'll catch on soon enough. You sound like my grandpa. He's always saying that. Yeah, oh. Good night, boy. Yeah. What's trouble in there? 
matter, darling? What is the trouble in the boy? You all right now, boy? Oh, he's been upset ever since we started, but nothing oh. like this. Ever been out of the city, has he? No, and he's never had a worry in his life, either. It's all right, Jeff. It's all right. Oh, good morning, boys. Nice day, ain't it? What do you mean a nice day? It's gonna be another scorcher. What do you want in that swamp box? Well, I was looking for a new pair of driving lines, but it looks like you found a place to find sliced bacon. No wonder we thought it was tasting so good lately. You two would complain if you had a roast pig with an apple in its mouth. A crab apple, even. Besides a uh, fresh fried harness, we're gonna have biscuits. There's one thing about those, Barney. They're a lot better to sharpen your knife with than whetstone. Did you ever try taking one of those things and just skim it across the pond like that? Skim what things? Biscuits, that's what. And you won't find better biscuits in Delmonico's. And that's in New York. Hm. You know what our trouble is? What? It's gonna take him so long to cook those things, get them all made, we're gonna be hungry, we're gonna eat them. And he's gonna go on thinking he's a real good cook. One of these days, it won't be long, you're gonna find out what a true genius I am, too. Either one of you connoisseurs seen my watch? No, but you better find it before it gets dark so you know when to go to bed. Oh, I reckon it'll show up. <laughs> Anyone for more whetstones? <laughs> you no, know, Charlie, there's one thing about you. What? Your face might stop a clock, but you sure can bake. Hey, speaking of clocks, I wonder what happened to my watch. You might have swallowed it. This thing cost me a dollar, too. Stop. You gummed it to death. That's what you done with your big mouth. Charlie Wooster, one of these days, I'm... I come to depend on this bill when I'm doing my bacon. Yes, sir. Well, maybe Mr. Allen could fix it. Grover. Sure, he's an inventor. He'll fix it in no time. That's good thinking, Barney. Yes, sir. <laughs> Anyone for more skimmers? Y'all yeah, skim you. you. No. I've been saving this for a long time. There should be enough here to buy the best pony in the train. I don't know too much about horses yet, Grandpa. Well, you will learn. You see, that's, that's half the fun. Why can't we go back home? Back home? What are you talking about? Well, where it was happy and easygoing and, and nice. Jeff, my boy, come here, sit down. Jeff, we, we can't go home now, even if we wanted to. We've got to go on to Green Valley, where there's 150 acres of rich black soil for every family, where the grass grows up to your ears, and game to hunt, and furs to trap, and horses to raise, and a farmstead to be built. I don't know how to do any of those things. But you will. You look at me. Here I am, an obsolete, worn-out machine already, junked out by the factory. That's why I want Green Valley for you. Don't I have anything to say about it? <laughs> Jeff, I'm sorry. Yes, I guess I've just been too selfish. Tell you what I'll do, Jeff. If you still feel the same way in a couple of days, well, then we'll all go back home, and I promise you. It's just that I hate to come this far and not even see Green Valley. Oh, thanks, Grandpa. I can stick it out as long as I know how long I gotta go it. <laughs> all right, boy. All right, now. Hmm? We gotta find a good name for your pony. You know what Beaver Smith called his pony? Savage. So how about Rough House or Twister or Lightning, Volcano? Tiger. Tadpole? <laughs> All right, boy. Tadpole it is. Sit down. Sit down. All right, boy. But why can't you fix it, Grover? Well, it's been a long time since I fooled with this stuff. I've been working on bigger machines, you know. I'd take it as a personal favor, though. 
All right, Charlie, I'll fix it. But you have got to keep it a secret. Otherwise, like, everybody in camp will show up with a broken watch, and we have bigger fish to fry, if you know what I mean. I won't tell a soul. That's Wait. it. I might just have some uh, spare parts here someplace. Say, maybe that new trader fellow has some parts. He was asking if we had a watchmaker with us. Here he is now. Mr. Allen? <laughs> Oh, yes, my name is Alan Grover Allen, yes. I'm Will Stevens. Oh, well. Yeah, I understand you're, um, you're quite an inventor. Well, actually, I'm more of a rancher, you know. I'm figuring on settling down there in Green Valley. Oh, yeah. I've heard of it. Sounds like paradise. Especially to us Easterners, huh? Well, I'm only partly an Easterner, you know. I really come from, uh, from here and there, so to speak, you know? Well, I gotta get back, Grover. You think you can fix my, uh... Well, I don't know. I'll let you know when it's ready. So. I mean my, uh... I'll let you know when it's ready. I mean my watch. Well, what? 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 Well, you just said, uh... When I find it, I'll let you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, what sort of, um, what sort of device are you working on now? Well, it's really, uh, it's quite a wizard, you know, but uh, that's all I can tell you about it. I got to think about my partners. Oh, I see, yes. <laughs> yeah. Wooster was just telling us that he'd baked his watch and the biscuits and you could fix it for him. It's my daughter in law, Della. It's my grandson, Jeff. How you do, uh, uh, Will Stebbins. He's a traitor. Husband's a mighty lucky man. My, um, my husband was killed at Gettysburg. Oh, I'm, I'm very sorry. I, uh... I take it that you don't have a wife or anything? Uh, no. No. Barney. Jeff? Mr. Ailes says we're going to be camped here for a while. That's so. Yeah, I was wondering if you'd like to ride out and see a prairie dog town with me. Did you ever see one up close before? No, I never did. Well, why don't we take a look? Owls and rattlesnakes live in with them, too. It's pretty interesting. It's like a regular little underground village. Might be Indians out there, too. Oh, Jeff, go ahead. There aren't any Indians out there. Grover, well, he doesn't have to go. Besides, he has lessons to do. Say, um, I got some good whittling knives in my wagon. Why don't you boys drop over later on and have a look? All right, Mr. Stebbins, I will later on. Jeff, if I had my life to live over again, I wouldn't be sitting around here moping. No, sir. I'd be the first one off and away. Well, I, I wanted to go with him, but... Well, he went away before I could get set. Jeff. Did you ever think of all the neighborhood boys who came west in wagons before you? You know, they probably felt the same as you. Well, I know I did. Uh, it took me a long time to get over the feeling that I was the mercy of the whole wide world. But finally, I got curious and uh, started enjoying myself. Do they really live in regular cities? Oh, prairie dogs, yeah, well, you bet they do. Someday I'll take a look. Sure. Sure. Well, the main thing is just to be yourself. Jeff, uh, how would you like to do some chores for me every morning? I could pay you something. Don't you have a boy of your own? No, Jeff, I, uh, I don't, but I sure wish I did. But I 
see you two got acquainted soon enough. M Mr. Stebbins wants me to work for him, Grandpa. Mm. Oh? What could he do? Oh, well, uh, odd jobs like uh, watering the team, watching my goods. I bet I've learned a lot, Grandpa. Now, Jeff, Mr. Stebbins is a very nice man, but he's not in the family yet. What about your own chores around here? You're always wanting me to go out and do something. Well, he um, could earn a few dollars. <laughs> Maybe someday he could buy a pony. I'm going to buy the pony for him. Whatever you say, Mr. Allen, I, uh, I don't want to interfere in your family business. Grover, Jeff needs something extra to do, a, a new interest. Gee, thanks, Mom. All right, boy, just do your best, that's all. Come on, Jeff, I'll, I'll show you the wagon, huh? You know, I kind of like that man. Something real steady about him. Seems to me there's something real shady about him. What do you mean? Just beware of Greeks bearing gifts. Grover, make up your mind, will you? Remember you told me to flirt with the boys? <laughs> Tap her in gently, like that. I'll hold it. Easy, easy. Okay. Now I have a slam. Well, I wish Grover had seen that. Here you are. I think that'll hold now. Thank you, Della. Well, I wish, uh, I wish I could tell Go you. Go on, don't let me interrupt you. Say, uh, Jeff, come here, would you help me pull on this rope? Yeah, it's very hard. Just give me a hand with this rope, will you? That's it. Pull it, boy. Pull it on. Ah, ha, ha! There we are. Settle down there. Settle down there. Tadpole. Well, what do you think of that, boy? Grover, I said that. Gee, Grandpa, I don't know. Well, there's nothing to be afraid of. You know what Mr. Hawk said? He said, this is the best horse in the whole wagon train. Just needs a little exercise, that's all. Why don't you get up on top of it? Take a little ride, huh? Take a little ride. Let me sit with him for a moment. He's probably scared with all these people around him. Sure, um, sure, Jeff. Yeah, just don't hurry. Um, run him down a bit and get acquainted and... Then you can take him out, huh? There's, a, there's no point in hurrying him. You'll be just like Beaver Smith galloping all around here, huh? <clears throat> and after you've taken care of him for a while, why, he'll follow you around just like a puppy. <laughs> why don't you um, take him on down and water him now so he, so he knows he's home, hmm? Look. You know, there you are. There you are. Uh, yeah. To be a wet blanket, but that's an awful lot of horse for an untrained boy. Why, well, you didn't think I was going to start him off on some old crow bait, did you? No, sir. That Jeff is not just a boy. He is my grandson. Well, I don't like to cut into your family, Mr. Well, then Alex. don't, don't. Grover! Gentlemen, it's getting late. Don't overdo yourselves. Ah, this is a real Jim Dandy, Miss Phoebe. Where do we get the canvas on? Yes, it's gonna purr like a Swiss watch. I'm sure it'd be wonderful. Let's move out! Mm. Hey. Hey. Breezy enough there for you? Oh, it's just wonderful. It's 
It's healthy, too. It blows the dust away. Yes, it blows the dust away. Did you hold it up a minute? Hold it. Hold it a minute. You sure it's breezy enough for you? Oh, yes, it's, it's extremely efficient. Because I can boost the power if you like. No, no, no. Uh, it's just perfect. I wouldn't want it one whit fast. It'll probably last you all the way to California, too. Well, I must say, I think you should patent your invention immediately before somebody takes your idea. Maybe I will. Do you mind if I ride along beside you for a minute? I want to check the mechanism. I'd be pleased, I'm sure. All right, thank you. <laughs> Is uh, something wrong? Oh, no, no, everything's just fine, just fine. Good. Well, would you mind moving the wagon in? You're holding up the rest of the train. Sure. Get out, get out. As cool as a pussy willy in a spring breeze, ain't you, ma'am? Yes, that's just what I was saying. Bill, you think Mr. Chris would allow me to have one of them on my wagon? Well, it might be all right from the lady from Boston, Charlie, but I don't know about... Don't be against progress, Bill. Progress? Yeah, I'm human too, you know. Maybe so. Go ahead, it's your uh, wagon and your neck. Yeah. Oh, dear. If I'm causing any trouble, any trouble at all, we should just dismantle the whole apparatus. No, don't you worry, fair lady. We're helping you because we like you. Good evening, Della. Hello, Will. Hey, how's that uh, horse of yours there, Jeff? Well, he really goes, Mr. Stebbins. But he's staying close by. Well, it's good practice setting the saddle mile after mile. After a while, you'll feel like a part of that horse. Well, I uh, hear the breezy booster is working like a charm. Uh, I guess I never give Grover enough credit. He's always surprising folks. Yes, so I've heard. Oh, uh, won't you stay for dinner? Well, thank you, Della. You're kind of nice about surprising people yourself. Got a letter for you, Mr. Stebbins. Thank you, Bill. Special rider brought it in. Must be important. You better open it. Go ahead, Will. Well, I, uh... I can guess what it is. Yeah. Bad news? I, uh, I don't know you. So you see, I'm uh, not a traitor. I'm a detective, plain and simple. Well, I'm glad you told me, but I can't believe that you're on to the right man. Well, it looks like him. He could have been in the right place at the right time. It's sure not what I figured him to be when I started out. Will, that letter says he wants immediate action. But I don't think you're so eager now. Yeah, maybe you're right. Well, something I gotta face up to. Well, Della, I wish I could thank you enough for your hospitality. Oh, you inspired Jeff's appetite. That's enough for me. Well, Jeff earned another 50 cents a day, too. That'll buy a lot of licorice, Jeff. Well, I'm gonna buy a new saddle blanket. You know, I suspect that horse will be coming in here for supper any night now. <laughs> well, good evening, folks. Good evening. Hey, Grover, I'd like to talk to you about my new... Shh, not a word. Don't say a word. The patent isn't in yet. I got it made. What's that? My new breezy booster. Where is it in here, wagon? Yeah, I improved the model, too. Yeah. What are you whispering for? What do you mean, what am I whispering for? All right, I'll come and see it first thing in the morning. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Shh. Ooh. Hey, Charlie, you think that overpowered eight feet of yours is gonna work? I'm as happy as the king of England. Just sitting here in a nice breeze counting the money my patent's gonna make. <laughs> yeah, but don't go sailing off on a cloud of dollars. Well, my next patent's gonna be a overstuffed, adjustable chair with an automatic team can. Just like that. <laughs> Oh, boy, that's great. The money will be rolling in from that invention. That's very involved. <laughs> 
up the whole wagon. Yep, that's progress, ain't it? What do you think Mr. Chris will say? You'll find out. Hmm, what a wonderful, wide-open, starry-eyed country. I think I was born for this, and I'm just now finding it out. What about you, Will? They say it's even nicer the other side of the mountain. Why don't you give up this trading business, settle down by us? Now make a new start. We're gonna need some close-by neighbors. Well, it's mighty generous of you, Grover. No, it's not generous. We can help each other. You can tend to the heavy work, and I'll mend the machinery. I'd like that, but... I'm afraid it isn't that simple. Well, life passes by very quickly, I know. It won't wait. No. No, nothing waits. Ready for some more coffee? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Well, I'm going to see if Miss Phoebe wants anything. It's too bad they took her cooler away from her. Well, she's bearing up like a true pioneer. He uh, seems kind of serious about Miss Phoebe. I suspect he's more serious about having a glass of her sherry. <laughs> she keeps it under lock and key, you know. Yes, I know. Tell her there are things I would like to talk about, but I haven't... Tell her nothing's hit me so hard. You, Jeff Grover... We all go together. Yes, I realize that. Well, you're a good man. You're kind and gentle. No, not till I'm not. I'm lost. I don't know where to turn. Well, what are you looking for, fair lady? Grover, I can't imagine whatever happened to my key. I've asked Mr. Wooster, I've asked everybody. Oh, no, Mr. Wooster wouldn't take it. I can guess who has got it. I just hate to break into my cabinet. Oh, Grover, could you make me a key? No, no. My fair lady, that is one key that I better not make. Well, if you can't, you can't. Mr. Wooster has a crowbar. Mm, no, no, no crowbar, please. <sighs> All right. All right, I'll make you a key right away. Uh, I can see why your friend Mr. Duskin appreciated you so much. <laughs> yes. Regardless of what I accomplish for the rest of my life, the results of my association with Mr. Duskin will be my greatest achievement.
fracture, maybe just a simple concussion. Keep him quiet, keep some cool cloths on his head. It'll help some. Is that all we can do? Depends a lot on the boy. Yeah. I wish we'd never started west. I think the boy needed a try, ma'am. His wagons won't move as long as it's in that condition. We're all together and we stay that way. Well, why don't you get a breath of fresh air? I'll, uh, I'll be here. I'll, I'll go get some fresh water. Grover? What are you doing up? Well, where can I go? How can I sleep? Grover. Well, Jeff's gonna be all right. I know he is. And it isn't your fault. Yes, it's my fault. It's all my fault. I wanted to make him happy. I wanted to make him remember me like I amounted to something in his life. I should have stuck it out with old Dustin. Oh. No, you mustn't talk like that. You're a wonderful father and grandfather. And you were right. Jeff should have a horse. And you should be the one to give it to him. Why, you're a living inspiration for both of us. Della, you're breaking my heart. What's wrong? Uh, I, I got a little cramp in my shoulder. I'm ready for the dustbin. Now, look, don't you go worrying yourself sick about this. After all, you're only as old as you feel. That's what you're always telling me. You come on, get some sleep, all right? Yeah. Better take her advice, Grover. Come morning, that boy would be as fit as a fiddle, ready to go. You know, Bill and Charlie, I've never been much of a gambler. No matter how much I tried or how much I pretended, I always came up with the wrong card. You know, I think it was probably because of something that I should have done a long time ago, and I didn't. Well, how do you mean? Well, whether I knew it or not, when I was young, I chose a way to go. And I put my whole life into it. I want you two to promise me something. I want you to promise that if anything happens to me, that you will see the Della and Jeff get through to Green Valley. It's only a few more miles, and you're going to make it, Grover. <laughs> no, I'm facing facts tonight. And I'm running down like an old clock with a weak spring. Will you promise? We promise. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, partner. Good night. Good night. Please, Lord, you want to have mercy on that little boy. He never did nothing worse than to stick by his old grandpa. And please believe that he's innocent, so don't cut him off for something that I did. And if I have to pay for a life, let it be my life and not his. And don't let him suffer for my sins. Because he deserves a chance because he's a good, good little boy. somehow, if I get it off of my chest, that it'll take the pressure off of him. 
You know most of it anyway. Yeah. Now, the key you made for Miss Phoebe clinched it. I still can't believe that you're capable of cold-blooded murder. Murder? It was justice. It was justice for all those poor people that Duskin had tortured in misery and pain and humiliation all those years. I saw what he did to the women. I saw what he did to the kids, little kids. And I put up with it myself 60 hours a week, 52 weeks a year, for nearly 40 years since I was his age. And then, and then he fired me. And he was going to fire the rest of the poor old men because I wasted a minute or two of his precious time. So for the sake of all mankind, if I had to do it all over again, I would do it a lot sooner and in exactly the same way. It eliminated the old devil who needed to be eliminated, and it didn't hurt anybody else. As a matter of fact, everybody got a few days off, and my old friends weren't fired. It was a masterpiece, except that I forgot one thing. Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. My grandson. I forgot that sometimes it's the innocent ones who suffer. Grandpa, what happened? Oh. Oh. Guess I'm just not the fancy rider I thought I was. Ah, oh, no nonsense. Everybody gets dusted off. You know, Beaver Smith couldn't laugh all day long unless his horse threw him a couple of times before breakfast. But I'm not Beaver Smith, Grandpa. I thought Tad was my friend. I thought I could trust him. I couldn't. It's not Tadpole's fault. It's mine. Grandpa, I want to go back. Now, listen, Jeff. We said we'd stick it out till we reached Green Valley. But I just can't do it. Listen, Jeff. You're the meaning of my life. I want to tell you something. All men, and that includes your dad and me, have terrible fears and doubts. They made very bad mistakes, but most men have the courage to carry them over. You know, when the going gets the roughest, that's when they say yes instead of no. They say, let's go instead of let's stay. Well, I tell you one thing, I'm going to buy a new 40-gallon hat. Even a skunk would be ashamed to meet his mother in this one. <laughs> is, is Tad all right, Grandpa? Sure he is, and he's sorry through you. Told me so himself. I bet I could ride him all right now. Yeah. You know, you and me, I gonna build the sweetest ranch that anybody ever saw. First thing in the morning. Hi. What's the matter, Grandpa? Isn't it? Nothing. I think it's just that you're gonna have to start growing up a little faster. Why, Grandpa? Well, you don't want to have to depend on me all your life, do you? I love you, Grandpa. I love you better than my horse. And I love you better than a little spotted pig.
I'm sorry, Grover. I've never even seen Green Valley. And we're so close. All right. I'll start to pack first thing in the morning. Don't worry. Is Jeff all right? Mm -hmm. Yes, he's fine. What on earth are you two whispering about? Della, I have to tell you, but not Jeff, please. I'm going back east with Will in the morning. Back east? I don't understand. Well, Will here thinks that I have done a bad thing. And Will is a detective. I want you to go on to Green Valley. I've asked Bill and Charlie to help you through. And then I'm going to join you just as soon as I get everything straight now. What's he talking about? Well, I, I would have dropped what it once. What has he once. done? Well, just before you left on the wagon train, Grover put a bomb in the factory and a Mr. Duskin was killed. You see, I have to. But I'll testify for him. He may get off with only a few years in prison. Prison? I've been in prison all my life. Why, oh, you aren't taking my Grover without a fight. Oh, please. It... Detective. Why, this whole wagon train will back me up. No, please. It's all settled. I did something wrong, and I have to pay. Them. No, Grover, no. We're the ones that have been wrong. Well, we've been living in a dream. And all the time, you've been spending your whole life trying to help us out. Please, dear, be quiet, both of you. I, I'm tired to death. I go peaceably in the morning. for being such a baby. I want you to show me how to help. Grandpa, please. Grandpa! Grandpa! I'll need some help. Well, he's got a good start on us. I'll get the horses. running away. You know that, don't you? Yes, I know, I know. He's just doing it to make things easy for us, that's all. Then I'll... I'll bring him back here, where he belongs. Well, it's where you both belong. You ready, Will? Yeah. Find him, Will. We gotta find him, ma'am, for his own sake. He can't live out there too long by himself. Wait a minute, I'll go get my horse. Jeff Allen, you stay right here. Mama, I'm gonna go help Grandpa. <laughs> Stay here with Jeff and hold the horses. Yeah. I'm going with you, sir. He's got a right. Rover! Here we go. Hey, foot. Straw foot. There's no hurry. You're late. You're late. You're late. Ah, uh, but not too late. 
used to dust it. Uh, I'm going to Green Valley. Nice cool stream there. There's big pine trees. The big houses for my grandchildren to crowd into. You didn't think I could make it, did you, Mr. Dustbin? <laughs> You're finished. No, I ain't finished. Mr. Dustbin, I'm just beginning. Yeah, from now on, I'm my own man. I'm going to my own valley where the birds are singing all day long. Oh, I'm going over there, Mr. Dustwing. Ain't far the top. Ain't far the top.